everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to Water Tanks. And today I've got a triple helping of gameplay for you in this, the E25. This is an absolute cockroach of World of Tanks, this tier 7 German premium tank destroyer that has preferential matchmaking, meaning that the worst possible matchup this vehicle can find itself in is against tier 8, is an absolute powerhouse of World of Tanks. This vehicle, it's easier to name the things that are bad about this tank than it is to really like uh, list off all of the things that are just amazing about this tank. The only thing that really sucks about this vehicle is it does have quite lackluster penetration, 150 on its standard rounds and 194 on its premium rounds. Add to that the fact that it has very low alpha damage of 135, which really doesn't sound like a tank destroyer, kind of more like a tier 6 medium tank within that regard. And you, you see why Wargaming originally gave this thing preferential matchmaking. Back in the day, the E25 was available just inside the German tank tree. I think you could pick it up for something low, like 4,000 or 5,000 gold. And boy, a lot of them sold. So many of these vehicles sold that just like with the Type 59, which I featured on the channel a couple of days ago, Wargaming had to yoink it from the tank tree uh, purchase opportunity because it was there were just too many of them in the matchmaker and it was having a detrimental impact. However, one thing that Wargaming didn't change about this vehicle was its class-based bonus. Back in the day, all of the tank destroyers in the game had a bonus like light tanks do currently, where they lost less camo after firing than all of the other tanks. And when you combine that fact with the E25's very low caliber gun for a tank destroyer of a 75mm and low caliber guns naturally lose less camo rating after firing because I guess the, the flash is going to be smaller from a uh, reasoning terms that the E25 ended up with this double whammy of broken camo inside the game after firing. When you combine that with other layers that Wargaming have added like the field mod now that I believe reduces your view range but increases the amount of camo that you uh, that you can retain after you fire and suddenly the E25 is an absolute monster. You might be looking at my build of this vehicle and thinking, oh my god, QB's using a Kaminet. I thought the Kaminet's absolutely useless. And yes, the Kaminet is useless on pretty much 700, or should I say 699 of the 700 different tanks that are inside the game. However, on the E25, it certainly is not. That is because the base 15% camo that the Kaminet will add to the E25, you retain pretty much about 28% uh, of that when you're firing. So that camo net itself is still going to be adding kind of like about uh, about 4% camo on this vehicle. Just, just under about 4% camo when firing. Which is mad because on this tank I can get 28% camo when I'm sitting still when firing. To put that into perspective, when most medium tanks are moving, if they're not using an exhaust, they do have about 28% camo towards the top end, the more sneaky vehicles. So the E25, while it's firing, quite often has better camo rating than medium tanks when they're moving inside World of Tanks. So what that means is that if your opponents have like 400 meters view range, which is very typical at this tier, they won't actually see you when you're firing until 300 meters. Now, of course, it helps when you don't have a T-67 in a bush that you haven't accounted for, and when you've sit, sat still long enough to be able to activate that camo net to be able to get that big camo boost. But boy, this thing is about as sneaky as it gets. And later on in the video today, you're going to see just how wild it can be. The first game that you see here is going to be just the E25 using its speed, using its crazy damage per minute, using that rate of fire with the extra crits to be able to deal module damage to its opponents and just pick them apart one by one by one. And remember, because you've got preferential matchmaking on this vehicle, the, you can't meet anything above tier 8, meaning that more often than not, you're not in tier 7 and tier 8 only matchmaking. There will be some juicy tier 6s for you to be able to harvest, and uh, yeah, lots of tier 5s inside this game as well. It really is absolutely filthy when you've mastered this vehicle, when I think you've set it up correctly, uh, and then you can really start to go to town on your opponents. Now, a lot of you might be thinking as well, thinking, QB, this surely has got to be one of the best tanks to use a gun rammer on. And yeah, I, I think it, it's, it definitely has its place on the vehicle. And my second build on this tank, I do use the gun rammer to be able to pump up that rate of fire. However, 
with this tank, if you want to go for this full crazy camo build with the camo net, if you want to not use binoculars on this tank, then you have to take vents in addition to the coated optics. Otherwise, you just simply don't get enough view range to be able to uh, to go after your opponents and be able to spot them. So that's why I'm using the vents on this build. It's because I literally need that extra 4% view range that it, that it gives you in addition to the premium consumable, in addition to having recon and situational awareness on my commander on this vehicle, very high pressure commander on this tank, to be able to get about 450 meters view range, give or take. And if you don't use uh, vents on this vehicle, then you're going to be struggling to be able to get enough view range to be efficient at decent distances. But what you can do as a free-to-play player is you could use binoculars instead. But I digress, I should be focusing on what's happening. That's I'm on I'm on eight kills. Now I'm on nine kills and my team is capped now. We've managed to pick up the pools medal and we're gonna put in one more shot. Are we gonna get 11 kills? And oh, why did they not reset? Oh well, I guess they didn't trust that the E25 was going to destroy two thirds of the enemy team, but it did. So an absolute monster round to kick off this triple helping of gameplay. This was my second pulls medal of the year. I usually only get one of those roughly every six months. For those 10 kills, 1,854 base experience, extreme ace tanker there, and a high caliber for the 4,200 damage. A tank sniper for dealing it at long range, as you would expect with this very sneaky vehicle. And remember, this is a premium tank as well. I didn't fire many gold rounds in this game, so I make 86,000 credits profit. Not bad, right? So round two, we're going to be doing more of the same and I'm going to be showing you that the E25 can also be a fairly proficient scout. Now, some of you out there who don't want to play this extreme camo that can be quite hard to, to figure out uh, with setting it up and having that 28% camo rating after firing with this build, might want to end up using something like an exhaust on this vehicle instead to be able to get into position, maybe even drop the vents to be able to use a gun rammer and then drop the coated optics to use binoculars for when you actually need the view range uh, at long range. But for me personally, I just want to make it extreme. And unfortunately, as we can see, if your opponents are sitting in bushes without a vision system, and we can't have one at tier seven, the LTG manages to spot us out. But luckily, we've also taken out their light tank. And so now the enemies only have one, the ELC even 90, but unfortunately, oof, we're down. But uh, I'm going to argue that we're min-maxing here because now we have adrenaline rush. So we've got the equivalent of a gun rammer without having one, right? Uh, we just have to exist on nine hit points. Uh, yeah, probably uh, not intended, right? Uh, but I will say that we're incredibly lucky that that Cheeto SP, which I think has 330 alpha damage or 320 alpha damage, low rolled there for us. But then again, I guess they, they rolled the first shell high. So we broke even. So now we're in a bit of a position where what can we do with these nine hit points? And it's about using this thing's ridiculous camo rating. The stationary camo on this vehicle is 25. The camo on while it's moving is 15. And when you scale that up with decent crew skills and using a camo directive like you see me using here, we're just a light tank, really. We can get forwards. And it's funny, we're actually spotting for the ELC for 90. I asked the ELC for 90 for, uh, for help, or I said that I'm going to help the ELC for 90, hoping that they're going to shoot the KB4, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So all the games that you're going to see today are from a single day of gameplay. They were one session that I had when I was trying to three mark this tank. And yeah, getting a pools medal was a, a pretty good uh, start early on. Although kills don't mean anything when it comes to mark of excellence, right? It's just about pumping out that damage. And no vehicle better for pumping out damage than a sneaky German tank destroyer. The matchup that you see the E25 in, this is as bad as it can be for this tank. We're playing against tier 8s and only tier 7s. Remember, as I said, this thing has preferential matchmaking. Never has to meet tier 9s. And yeah, this is as bad as it can be. Uh, more often than not, when there are tier 8 tanks on the enemy team, you're going to have a few tier 6s as well. That's not the case here. So that Cheeto SP was last spotted just further west to my position, but I'm thinking more about going to town on this KB4. We're going to be firing gold now. These rounds are expensive. The standard rounds on this tank are practically free at 109 credits a shot, but you are paying thousands of credits for each of those shells. And so don't go and load full gold in this vehicle and expect that you're going to break even because it's certainly not going to be the case. So we're going to push forwards now, and I'm just wondering where this Cheeto that put two chunks out of us earlier, and I'm just hoping he doesn't spot me. He doesn't. So now we're going to 
reverse behind the bush, we're going to sit still, and we're just going to go to town on this G2SP. We're going to wait for our camo net to activate. And again, I got 28% camo now, and I've got a bush in front of me. So we've got like 80% 80, 80 camo. 80% camo in this scenario. So even if he's got uh, 400 meters view range, they're not going to really see me until they proxy spot me in this scenario. And so that allows us to just go and farm. A lot of people uh, talk about a double bush in World of Tanks, and it's something that I never really considered. What do people mean when they're saying double bush, when they say double bush? And that's where they, they think they've got two, well, they, they see that they've got two bushes between them and the target. Now, what's interesting about the E25 is the E25, it is always a bush when it's sitting still with its camo net. It always has 28% camo with this build. And so effectively, any bush that you can get between you and your opponents, you're always double bushing within that regard. And that is why this tank is just so mad. So back to the story about when tank destroyers used to have a class-based bonus. Can you believe that Wargaming realized, and they removed this back in the day from all of the tank destroyers, they thought, oh, this is toxic gameplay. People can't see tank destroyers and it's not fun for anyone. So of course, when they removed it from all of the tank destroyers, they didn't remove it from any of the premium tank destroyers in the game at the time, which is this and the SU-12244. And while you could go and try and replicate a build like this on the SU-12244, it's definitely not going to have the same result. Why that vehicle is large, it doesn't have quite so crazy camo. And secondly, that vehicle has a larger caliber gun, 122 compared to the 75mm that this tank gets. And that's what really creates this double whammy effect. You have the OP camo from back in the day, you have Wargaming's incompetence to not nerf premium tanks, and now they've got these legacy problems that prevents them from putting new crew skills into the game. Uh, that you would have seen last year, or is it even two years ago now, from Crew 2.0, where they were going to have a skill which I think increased camo when you were sitting in a bush, or maybe just increased, or maybe it would just re further reduced the camo that you lost after you were going to fire. Uh, and with a tank like this, unless Wargaming decide to nerf a vehicle in this scenario, they can't really add more layers the increased camo in the game because it just further increases a tank like this to uh, to go from like insanity levels to the game is broken kind of levels so if you've got one of these or if you see one of them pop up for sale give this build a go see what you make of it and i had a, a whale of a time uh, getting a little bit filthy in this absolute cockroach of world of tanks with this disgusting build so now we're up to uh, 4,000 combined, and boy, are we happy that that Cheeto SP low rolled on me. If they didn't, this would have been a big marks loss. Now it's going to be a big marks gain, as I think that requirements on this vehicle, I think it's about 2,700. You need to three mark this tank in each of the games that you play. And so this will be big stonks right now with 4,300 combined. Very satisfying that one cockroach takes out another in the form of the ELC even 90. And the Mittlerer, unfortunately for them, narrowly misses me, allowing the E25 to remain in position. But I've got to be cheeky here. I have to admit, I see that my team is capping. I know that I've only got 30 seconds left in the game, so I'm going to be a little bit aggressive. And I probably shouldn't have just sat there and allowed the Mittlerer, Mittlerer to go after me. But I was greedy, trying to farm as much as I can to try and progress towards our marks. Luckily for our team, they managed to vanquish the Mittlerer. They don't get towards the Super Hellcat even. And we take down another round. So what we saw here was the E25's tremendous scouting capabilities. You can get forwards, and even though my team wasn't spotting for me, it allows you to push flanks that other tanks can only dream of within the tank destroyer class and still enough to finish number one on damage with 1,400 base experience. Not quite enough to get an ace tanker in this vehicle, but still 44,000 credits profit. So round three, we're going to be rolling out against tier six and tier seven tanks on the Studzianki map. And E25, just perfect. The bushier, the better. All three maps that you've seen me play today are bushy. And that's why I'm going to be using, once again, this very sneaky build. Let me clarify. I do have a second build once again on on this vehicle where I'm going to be using a gun rammer instead uh, of the of the camo net and just being able to then use the overwhelming firepower rather than being sneaky to deal with your opponents. For maps when you're playing on like Ansk or maps that you're playing uh, on Himmelsdorf, for example, where you really need to just get the rounds out down on your target. So a cracking shot there to start the game off with on the uh, KV-2. The T25-2 is advancing across 
and I was quite surprised that my sixth sense didn't go off. But however, when I fired, you saw that my sixth sense did go off. Uh, that was because I didn't have my cabinet activated. If I did, then maybe the T25-2 wouldn't have spotted me. But also, we have to deal with the Cromwell that's above here. Now, I hate the way that they've changed Mr. Junkie uh, as a map with... I feel like they've just made this bush location up towards the north a lot more tricky for the medium tanks to use. And I think that previously it was quite high skill, uh, I felt. And now it just feels as if it's you just have to sit here and just wait. But uh, luckily, we're not we're not gonna ha have too much time to sit here and wait. And our opponents nearly managed to absolutely blast us in the side. However, I'm thinking to myself, well, what happens if I just get to the back of the map against these tanks that have bad view range? And am I spotted right now? Hmm, I'm not spotted right now. Okay, well, what about if I sit still and get my camera activated? Will they spot me now? No. Oh, they do! Oh, no, they do! 336! I was very surprised. Jump scare. Uh, I don't know how they managed to see me at 336 meters there. Maybe it had been the, uh, the uh, CC-56. I'm actually looking above me now to think, is there a setter in the bushes above me? I was so surprised that the, the KV-3 was able to see me at that distance. Because, again, I do, when I sit still and I have my camo net activated, I got like 28% camo, so they shouldn't be able to see me at 300 meters unless they've got over 400 meters view range. But maybe the KV-3 was set up in an aggressive way. Maybe they're using coated optics. Maybe they have a good crew. Maybe they got all the field mods on the KV-3 for all of we know. I guess we could check by taking a look at their hit points, although we can't see them for now. But, um, yeah, just, just wait for it. Okay, what about a KV-2? Does he have enough view range? No, not at all. And it's just so weird to be able to sit still in this kind of a scenario. So I have to go a little bit further forwards because of the fact that I don't quite have the gun elevation to get the KV-3 there. So the CC-56 is going for us. And with this kind of a build, it's also really nice to work within your artillery. Uh, if you see an artillery stun a tank, that's going to reduce their view range by 25%, which is very powerful as well. It'll allow you to just go to town. And with this cabinet activated again, the KV-2 just can't see us. It just feels absolutely filthy. And so you can put yourself in positions that other tanks just don't expect you to be when you're firing. The whole point of the game is that when you fire, you lose so much camo that every vehicle pretty much sees you unless you're at a very decent distance. Well, the E25 just says no to that rule. And maybe this was the tank that saw me earlier. You'll see there's an E25 there. And I think that it might have been that E25 in the bush above me and not actually the KV-3 that spotted me. But that would just me be me guessing. I think it probably was considering that later on in this replay, the KV-3 didn't see me when I was shooting at them. And I have to admit, it's incredibly frustrating now that there's a, a cockroach opposite me Luckily, though, they're not using the bushes. I don't really want to get caught up here. I was worried that I was going to get spotted through the gap. I'm going to poke back up again. And this time I get spotted through that gap. And oh, disaster, come on. We're still currently at two marks of excellence in this game. I think I worked it out that the requirement that I needed in this round was roughly about 5,000. So you can see that I'm starting to get a little bit jumpy. And so I decide to myself that sitting on this flank... Uh, against an E25 who's just going to chill to all intents and purposes in those bushes and it becomes a very non-progressive fight. So I'm not interested. So what I'd rather do instead is use the very decent speed that this vehicle has to make my way down towards the south then approach the west and try and flank around. And then hopefully we can farm up all of those juicy unspotted tanks like the Britannia Panther, the T-78 and then turn ourselves to the camping E-25 instead. I'll also admit that sometimes I do get a bit paranoid when I see the tank, uh, a same, the same tank on the enemy team. Uh, especially when I'm doing something like three marking and I was at like about 94.5% or whatever I was in this vehicle. I get paranoid that maybe somebody's watching the stream and they're just trying to stop me from reaching that, that achievement. Or just be able to hound me in the battle. And so I was kind of expecting maybe that they're going to flank back round and go west if I do get spotted here. Or that they were just going to try and make my life a living nightmare above me. And I thought that I can always be more progressive against players that don't know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Or at least just trying to have it out for me. But I honestly think it might be my paranoia in this situation. There's a lot of E25s in the game. And they quite often get into similar battles because of those preferential matchmaking uh, abilities that they have. And when you think about it, every time the E25 
signs up, it's going to give some tier 7 or tier 8 player decent matchmaking, especially the tier 8 players. If the E25 does get into a tier 8 game, then that tier 8 tank is finally not going to have to play against all tier 8 matchmaking or play against tier 9 or tier 10 vehicles, which I don't know about you, but is possibly the, the worst part of World of Tanks, at least for me recently, is same tier matchmaking. It's so unbelievably boring. And even though you, you could say, oh, QB is because you've played this game for a decade. That's why. I don't think it is, especially when the game never used to be that way. It used to have so much more variety and so much more of a, a spread inside it. But oh, we don't have time to worry about variety or a spread here. And that's because there's a setter right in front of us. We ram them a little bit. We're trying to put the pressure up on them. Just trying to stay underneath their gun line. But oh no, we get shut down. But luckily, the Britannia Panther is getting absolutely nailed. And hopefully, someone on my team is going to destroy the setter. And they do. And oh, this was close. Remember when I said that I needed about 5,000 combined? Well, if that damage against the setter after I died, where he just disappeared, actually still counts as my spotting, then this might be enough to be able to three mark the tank. And luckily... As we can see here, the, the spotting did indeed register. We got 2,993, which was just about that 5k requirement that I that I said. And that was the three mark on the E25 for our patrol duty medal, Confederate and tank sniper. Showing you just all of the aspects of the E25 in these three videos. You saw the crazy rate of fire and just the, the harassment potential that you can have inside a nice matchup to destroy two thirds of the enemy team. Following it up with never leave a cockroach even with an inch of its life because it's going to come back and just annoy you. Uh, apologies to the Cheeto for that. And finishing it up, truly showing what this tank's crazy camo is able to do by nailing those Soviet heavies with at like, what about 300 meters with no hope of them spotting us. So all in all, the E25, an absolute filthy vehicle inside World of Tanks. And if you want to copy my build and give your opponents no hope, uh, at least at decent distances, then I'll, I'll leave it in the uh, description down below. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. That was uh, Filthy Baby 3 marking an incredibly disgusting tank. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, later on today, there is going to be the Tech Tree Showcase on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby of the Czechoslovakian mediums, which are currently top of the tree. So come along and see some of the highest burst damage in the game. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.